Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Becca. Usually I make vlogs about our move from the US to New Zealand and just about life in general, but today I'm going to be talking about something that I'm pretty passionate about and that is cloth diapering. <laughs> so my son is right over two years old now. I just wanted to share it because a lot of times on the internet it just makes it seem like it is so complicated and such a hard process when really once you get your system and get everything figured out it is so easy and mindless honestly and it's just a really great thing to incorporate into your life if you're thinking about or do have children so just a couple of notes right before i start in i just wanted to be very upfront so we use cloth diapers like 99 percent of the time the only time we ever use disposables is if we went on long trips or just vacations and stuff like that another thought is to try and get them used if possible so a lot of times people will get them with the best of intentions but it just doesn't work out for them and their family and that's fine we got a whole giant pack of diapers and a lot of them had never even been used once and they were in perfect condition and we really lucked out because we got really nice diapers for way cheap because i am here trying to convince you to cloth diaper i thought i would just really quickly run through the pros and cons to me first is that they save so much money there are so many different estimates out there because there are so many different factors that play into this number but a lot of people will get into the nitty-gritty and be like oh well you're doing extra laundry and you're using more electricity and more detergent and the numbers vary if you buy a whole set of new diapers versus used and there's just so much that goes into it but i just know that every time i go to the grocery store and i see people's buggies that have the packs of expensive disposable diapers i'm just so happy that i never ever have to even think about that the next is that i just think that they are so much cuter uh, maybe that's a personal opinion. Next is that it saves the planet. There's the estimate that you use 1,500 to 1,800 disposables per child. So if you have several children, you can see how quickly that adds up. And then there's also the fun number out there that it takes like 400 years for that one disposable diaper to decompose fully. Your childhood diapers are still in the landfill somewhere. Next, it's generally accepted that they potty train faster. So maybe this is anecdotal, but my son was potty trained right before he turned two and it was a pretty seamless process. I think the cloth diapering did have something to do with it. Next is just that it's better for the baby's bum. So you're using a lot of natural materials that are up against the baby's skin all the time and you're avoiding all of the synthetic and the plastic chemicals and additives that they put into diapers. And then the very last thing is just that I love that I can just use the shells of these as his swim diapers. That's just something that I never have to think about either. The cons are that they are so much more leaky. The technology and disposables just hold so much more. And so you do have to change more often, which means that you have to do laundry more often. So it is more work in the end for you. Honestly, cloth diapering can be frustrating sometimes. <laughs> But having said all of that, I totally think that cloth diapering is completely worth it and I will do it for my next child. So the first big question that most people ask is how many cloth diapers do I need? And that kind of varies depending on how often you want to be doing laundry. And it also varies depending on how old your child is. So in the beginning, when my son was a newborn, he pooped every single time he ate. So that's a lot of diaper changes. But then later on, as he gets older, I had to change him less and so I could get away with less. But roughly, I think we had about 20 diapers and that worked out well for us. Jumping right into one of the most overwhelming parts of trying to cloth diaper is just trying to pick out the best diaper that will fit best for you and your family. But once you make the decision, you don't ever have to think about it again. So I'm just gonna run through the list of all of them and you can see which one fits best for you and your family. The first type of diaper is the all-in-one. So this is, the best choice if you are very overwhelmed with the thought of cloth diapering and it just seems really intimidating because these are the most similar to how disposables work. They're really simple. They're just all contained into one unit. All you do is put it on and then you take it off and wash it from there. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So it is just all one complete unit. Some cons to these are that they are the most expensive, at least they tend to be. I find that they're the bulkiest just because they are all sewn together and there's just not a lot that they can get away with that with. What? <laughs> I also think that they're the hardest to clean because it is all together. If you get poop in it that you have to wash, it's, it's kind of hard to get it all out. And plus because of the bulk and the amount of sewing and extra fabric that goes into this, it does tend to get more stinky over time just because the washing machine can't really agitate and wash it as well. But again, I know plenty of people that have all-in-one diapers and they absolutely love them because it is the least overwhelming and it's just the easiest to figure out and run with. The next type of diaper I think is by far the most popular and that is the pocket diaper. So this is also my favorite kind of diaper. All it is is a shell. 
that has a kind of cottony lining on the inside. And the reason it's called a pocket diaper is because it has this hole at the top. The proper way to do it is you get your pads and you stuff it in and you shove it all the way through and then this becomes your diaper. So still really, really simple, not hard at all. I actually make it a step easier just because I'm very lazy. I just take my pad and put it over top of the diaper and then I just put this on the baby because who has time to sit there and stuff all of your diaper shells every single time? A lot of people really love these because they are kind of mid-range in price and they work really well and they are also just a bit easier to clean. The next type of diaper is a hybrid. So this is an example of one. It looks like this. It has this kind of mesh interior and it has this pad that snaps in. I actually don't love these. A lot of people completely are in love with them. I think that they are one of the stinkiest and hardest to clean. And the idea behind them is that you can just take off the pad and then put a second one in if the shell doesn't actually get dirty. So it's supposed to save on money because you don't need to buy as many shells and then it's supposed to save on laundry. But I found that this would always get a little bit damp or get a little bit of poop on it. And so I just always ended up washing the shell with the pad anyways. And because of the way that it's built, it is sewn in together. It just takes a really long time to dry and it doesn't clean as well in the washer. The next type of diaper is called a diaper cover and prefold. So I don't actually have an exact example of this, but if you just imagine this doesn't have the cottony lining and it's just the kind of plasticky shell, then all you do is you take your liner and then place it inside and there's your diaper. So this is the most customizable. They also tend to be the most cheap. Again, if the shell is not soiled at all, you can reuse it, which is really nice. I thought that this was going to be the type of diaper that I really liked, but I just never got a hold of any, and so I prefer the pocket diapers personally. That's mainly it. Those are the four different main types of diapers. There's a couple of other variations out there. For example, snaps versus Velcro. <laughs> a lot of people don't prefer the Velcro just because it does wear out faster and you would need to theoretically get it replaced whereas the snaps wear a lot better so if you want to have these diapers for a few children snaps are the way to go another thing that i kind of wish i had known about when i first started is that there are different sizes of cloth diapers so typically there's two and it is just totally dependent on the company and what they sell but for example these diapers i really like them but they come in two different sizes they have the smaller size and the larger size so my son grew out of these when he was about one year old and they've been useless to me since so I'm definitely going to reuse them with the next child, but a lot of companies will have a one size fits all. I loved this because I could put this on him after he was a newborn and it still fits him if I need to use it as a two year old. So all the way up to potty training. So the snaps are really nice on this because I mean obviously the top ones they just go around the waist so you adjust it to how big their waist is. And then these bottom ones down here, they adjust to how small you want to make the diaper. So when they are younger, you have these bottom ones snapped all the way up. And then once they get older, you just snap them down and it becomes a much larger diaper. So if I'm buying fresh diapers in my diapering journey, I'm going to get the one size fits all because they last the whole time. I just wanted to very quickly mention that a lot of people use and love wool covers because wool is a very natural material and it absorbs really well. I don't have any experience with it but you can give it more research if you want. The very last kind of variation I was going to mention is just the topic of the newborn cloth. So a lot of people opt to just use disposables until they can fit into the larger diapers. And honestly, that's what we would have done, but we were gifted a handful of newborn diapers because they are only in them for such a small amount of time. It doesn't really seem worth the investment unless you know you wanna have a lot of children and you're super into saving the planet and whatever. But we actually only had four or five of these. And so what we did, I just put him in the bigger ones because it's not like he's moving at you know a couple weeks old. And so I could just kind of sit him in the diaper and it caught everything. So when we ran out of these, I would just use those and it worked out fine. The next thing to think about is all the different types of liners. So you have cotton, you have hemp, black charcoal bamboo, regular bamboo, and then you also have microfiber. So I have used most of these and I find that they're pretty interchangeable. The only one that I would say is much different is the microfiber, just because it is a more synthetic material and it's said to not really be advised to put up against the baby's skin just because it is more drying. 
Another thing that we did that I don't think is very common is we made fleece liners. So I just got a bulk chunk of fleece and then cut it up into diaper sized pads. And so all I do is when I have the pad, I just put this over it and it just makes a nice barrier in between the pad and the baby skin. On to the next topic, poop. Everybody's favorite thing to talk about. First thing to mention is just in the beginning, when you have a breastfed or formula fed baby, it's so easy and you don't have to think about it because the poop at that point is water soluble. You don't even have to rinse it. You can just place it into the bin and then wash it. It gets a little more tricky when they start solids because once they start solids, their poop needs to be flicked into the toilet. I am not very grossed out by poop, so I've never had an issue with this, but it's really simple. I just flick it into the toilet and then I have a laundry sink. If you don't have a laundry sink, then I would use just a well draining sink that I have in the house. Or if you don't have that, then I would use a bathtub. I've done all of the above. Once you get rid of the bulk of the poop, I just take it into the sink and I just scrub like this under the running water and I find that it always gets the majority of the poop off. I don't even have to really touch it and then you just kind of squeeze the bulk of the water out. You can put it into the bin and wash. I've also heard people swear by the toilet sprayers so you can get them fairly cheap. You just attach it to your toilet and then you can just hold it over and then spray it off down into the toilet and I've heard really great things about it. Another reason why I really love the fleece liners that we made is it actually makes disposing of the poop even easier because then I can just take this liner and then flick the poop off and it's just it just contains it really well but i've also heard people use the disposable bamboo liners that you can get in bulk on amazon or from stores or whatever and then you can just pick it up and throw it away you're not supposed to flush them though the next topic is just about how to store the diapers until you're ready to wash them this is probably too much detail but i just love hearing about everybody's different methods and we have used plenty of them so for a long time we just had like a big kind of fishing bucket i think it was that we had a pillowcase in and then once it was wash day and we had collected enough you just pick up the whole pillowcase dump all the diapers into the wash with the pillowcase and then you just wash it all and it's that simple now we just have a plastic bin that we just fill all of the diapers once they're rinsed. And then again, once we collect enough, we just dump it on the washer and wash. I know a lot of people will also use the diaper pails. I've never done that one because I do prefer to let my diapers breathe and also I'm cheap, so I don't wanna buy an expensive diaper pail. And the last method, some people just have their wet bags and they just keep them in there the entire time. And it's whatever, it just takes a couple days until you wash it and it's always typically fine. I thought I would just run through the process of using a diaper just to show how simple and mindless it is once you do get this all figured out. You start by putting the diaper on the baby. After two to four hours, you take the diaper off. If they have not started solids yet, you just take the diaper and put it right into the bin. If they have started solids, then you do have to flick the little poopy into the toilet. Give it a good little rinse and then put it into the bin. You let it build up for a couple few days and you give it a wash, you give it a dry, and then you just fold it up, put it away. It really is that simple. The other thing that I will mention is that a lot of people get really intimidated by the thought of cloth diapering while they're out and about. I think it's the exact same, except instead of throwing the disposable diaper into the garbage where you are at the store or whatever, then I just take the soiled diaper and then you have a wet bag. And so you just put the whole thing, I don't even wash it or rinse it or anything. Even if there is a poopy in there, I just put the whole thing into the wet bag and I wash it like normal once I get home. I have never ever had any kind of issues or problems with cloth diapering in public. The last thing that we did that I absolutely cannot recommend high enough is making cloth wipes. You can also buy them, I'm sure, but they are just the handiest things to have ever. So for us, we just got this bulk thing of flannel we just folded it over, did a zigzag stitch around the edge, and then we made about 50 of them, and they are so great to have all the time. Like, I will use them, obviously, on my baby's bone, but I'll, like, clean the house with them. They're great. I'll wipe up spills. They're super handy to have, like, out and about. And honestly, I prefer these because I think that they clean the baby's bum so much better than disposables do. When I have to use disposable wipes, I feel like I have to use at least three of them to get all of everything clean, whereas with this, I need one. And all it is, it's really simple. I would have a water bottle next to my diaper changing station and I would just get the wipe wet and then just wipe the baby's bum until it's all clean. And then I would get a second dry one and then just pat dry because when you're cloth diapering, you want to prevent wetness because that will promote a lot of rashes and stuff. So I would just dry the baby's bum really well and then put the next diaper on and 
Yep, cannot recommend them enough. The next subject that can be very overwhelming is about the washing instructions. And I think the reason this gets so overcomplicated online is just because there's so much variation depending on where you live. So some people live where they have very hard water and that will affect how you wash them and how clean they come out. What part of the country in depends on what kind of detergents you can have access to. And there's just so much variation. We have moved around quite a bit and honestly we've done so many different things and I have found that most of it works just fine. So again, it's just about finding what works for you and then figuring out the trial and error and it's fine from there. But I know for us, we have done both cold and hot water before. Both of them seem to clean just fine. I know some people prefer the hot because they think it sanitizes more. More. The thing with the detergents, there are so many different kinds, but generally I would try to get fragrance free and as natural as possible, but still effective. Um, you're not gonna find this in the US because I am in New Zealand currently. We have also used both powder detergent and liquid detergent. And again, not a huge variation. I find that it cleans both of them just fine. About the actual settings of the washer, you wanna put it on the longest setting that is possible because it has the longest time to clean. I know for a while we had a washer that had a pre-soak option and we would always do that. But again, just figure out what your washer does best. <laughs> Another thing that I will know that might gross a lot of people out, for a very long time, we used to do all those diapers completely separate, but it made so much laundry and it was such a headache that eventually we just started washing his clothes with ours and I have never found an issue with that. I think everything comes out completely clean and I, yeah, we still do that. Something else to be said about washing is that when you have your newborn, they have their lovely neon poops and they stain. But this is a diaper pad that he has used since the beginning and you know, they get horribly stained throughout time. There's something so magic about the sun. So after you wash it like normal, if you can place it outside in the sunshine to dry, it completely gets rid of all the stains and it is beautiful. Not that the stains actually make any difference to how well the diapers work, I just know that it bothers a lot of people, including myself. Last note about washing is just, again, you have to do it more often. So I think we ended up washing every second or third day, depending on how many diapers he would go through. And that's it. That's all of the washing instructions as simplified as possible. So the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is just the brands of diapers that we have used and what we have liked and what we haven't liked. This first brand I'm gonna talk about is Grovia. A lot of people completely love them. I did not. I talked about my cons with hybrids and I think that it holds true. They just don't clean as well. I just don't think the theory behind the shell not getting soiled, it just doesn't ever work for me. And so I bought a couple of these and I would not, I wish I hadn't. The next brand that I and I know a lot of people on the internet love is Nora's Nursery. This is one that we got a whole pack of from online and they are great. I love them. I've never had any issues with them. They come in a whole big pack and I love all the colors of them. They have some more fun patterns if you're into more vibrant stuff. A lot of them are just very neutral and cute. I'm a fan. <laughs> I've also heard really, really wonderful things about Bum Genius. They are more pricey and so I never bought any and I was never gifted any, so I don't have any personal experience, but a lot of really great reviews about those. The other brand that I kind of mentioned before was this kind, so this is Fuzzy Buns. And again, I like them. However, they do come in two different sizes. And for that reason alone, I would never purchase these on my own. These are actually gifted to us. And again, they're great. I love them. They worked, but I, d I don't like the sizing. <laughs> the only other brand that we used is pumpkin buns. So this kind of goes with a lot of the different kinds of diapers. They're just kind of no name. You can find them cheaply on Amazon or different sites like that. They're they're not that great, they're not that bad. They're just very midline and they tend to be cheap. That's all the brands that I have. So the last subject I have on cloth diapering is troubleshooting because cloth diapering can be so frustrating sometimes. But the first main problem that people will run into are leaks. One of the first things that you can do for that is just by adding more absorbency. So if you're using one liner and you're finding that you have a lot of leaks, maybe just add one more liner and then that might solve all your problems right there. The next thing is just to make sure that your fit is right. And so if you're really concerned about this being a problem, you can go onto forums online and just post pictures of how your diaper is fitting on your child. And a lot of people are very helpful in there and they will comment and be like, oh yeah, maybe you need it tighter or maybe even looser. Next is just that you might need to change more often. So again, with cloth diapers, you do have to change them more frequently and that's just the way that it is. You might need to know that girls and boys pee differently. So girls tend to pee a lot more evenly throughout the entire diaper, whereas boys, they have a lot more front loading going on. And if you're finding that that might be the case, then you can do something as simple as 
adding more of the pad towards the front and just folding it under. So that way it has more absorbency towards the front. The next problem is probably the most frustrating thing in the world because it seems like you're doing everything the exact same and then all of a sudden it seems like every single one of your diapers is having a leaking issue. And what typically has happened is something has snuck right into your washer and it can be something as simple as some essential oils or some diaper rash cream or some fabric softener or maybe you use too much detergent or not enough detergent. I don't know. It can be a little temperamental. But I've always found when I have that issue, I can just throw all of my diapers back into the wash, throw in some stripping detergent, and then wash them all clean, do the normal process, and then they come out fine after that. Next troubleshooting that a lot of people have issues with is the nighttime diaper. So we eventually figured it out for us and it works, I would say 90% of the time. We use these very large shells and we just have essentially a ton of padding in here. So this is a giant cotton cloth that I will try fold into a long rectangle. And again, because he is a boy, I will fold this front part down. And this is basically our nighttime diaper. The issues come because they are sitting in this diaper for 12 hours. And so typically a little normal diaper will hold pee for like two to four hours. And so you have to really kind of triple the amount of absorbency for your nighttime ones. A lot of people get really frustrated and they start using disposables at nighttime and that is totally fine. Like if you have to use one disposable a day, that's great. If you can use cloth the rest of the time or whatever is comfortable for you and your family, do what works for you. Next is when you run into the problem of a really stinky diaper. <laughs> so I've heard it called the barnyard stink, which is just terrible. But basically what happens is when you have your freshly washed diapers and you put them on your baby and they just like barely pee in it a little bit and it stinks so bad, that's when you know you need to strip. So they have stripping detergents and the one that we use is called RLR laundry treatment. It is really cheap. I just buy it in bulk on Amazon and I just run it through like normal, just as the instructions say. Essentially the theory behind that is with your cloth, eventually stuff starts to build up in it. You have ammonia, you have your hard water minerals, you have all these things that shouldn't really get on it, like a little bit of diaper cream and you know, just stuff happens to your beautiful cloth. And so when you put in the stripping detergent, it really gets in there and really cleans all the fibers out. So then it is more absorbent and it doesn't stink anymore. <laughs> of course, I'm on my very last point of my camera dies. The last note that I have is just about diaper rashes and creams. So you need to be a little bit wary of them. The reason that they work so well is essentially they're creating a barrier between your baby's skin and the wetness, because that is usually what causes a lot of the rashes and problems and skin sensitivity. Activities. When you put this cream on, it will transfer to the diapers. So what you need to do is go online and go onto these very helpful forums or websites and they will have pretty much every single diaper cream ever invented. And depending on where you live, you can find which ones you have access to and they will tell you which ones are diaper safe and which ones are not. For us, we actually used ones that weren't diaper safe and I found that it worked out fine, but only because, again, we use these fleece liners and so the diaper rash cream would only ever coat this. I didn't ever care how absorbent this was. I just cared how absorbent the actual pad was. And so it worked fine for us. But again, do that at your own risk. <laughs> the only other thing I'll say is just that diaper free time for babies is so good. It just lets their little bottoms air out. So if you are finding that you are having a lot of skin sensitivity issues, maybe just try to let them go without their diaper for little stretches of time throughout the day. But that is it. That is all that I have on cloth diapering. I hope that it was not overwhelming and I hope this video was not too long. Again, I think the biggest thing with cloth diapering is just taking the time in the beginning to do a lot of trial and error to figure out which system works for you. And then after that, you are golden. You don't have to think about it again. And it's such a mindless and beautiful process that saves you a ton of money and also saves the planet and makes your kid look cuter. <laughs> But that's all that I have. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye.